Saturday Social, brought to you by EA Sports FC with PlayStation 5. Who guessed that consume a lot of content, both abroad and in the EFL, as we said? We thought we'd tap into that knowledge, didn't we, today? Yeah, absolutely. The Saturday Social whiteboard is out. And today mm. we are looking at the top five players from across Europe that are destined for Premier League moves. Now, we don't want big names here. We're not looking for, you know, Jamal Musialas and players like that. We're looking for some more interesting shouts, some more mm. niche selections. One player from each league we're going to go through. Mm. And we're going to kind of work our way up to players that we think are, could have serious impacts in the Premier League, despite their okay. not being talked about about on a global scale. So not your Florian Verts, not, your not those kind of players. Kind we of speak players. about them too regularly. We do. So we want yeah. some outside shouts. And in terms of the order, are we... Are we doing We're building towards, I think, the most effective immediately. So the player who would come in and have an instant impact and you like think it. would be a really, really special signing. OK. okay. Happy with that? Yeah. Happy. OK, who are we going to go with at five? Should we both produce them at the same time? Or Can do. We'll talk through Yeah, it? yeah, sure. Uh, so I've got Jonas Vind. OK. Mm. I am famous for getting all... Pronunciation's absolutely incorrect, but I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is yeah. Vind. Um, he plays for Wolfsburg. Uh, he is a, a striker, he's six foot three, 16 goal involvements this year. And the assignment, I thought the assignment was really interesting in terms of like the players that we should go and get. And, and some people will know of him. He's Danish, and I think he's perfect for the Premier League. And when I speak about the Premier League, he's actually been linked with a few teams West Ham, I think maybe Wolves as well. But any of those teams, sort of Palace, Brentford, I was thinking Brentford straight away mm. with the exit of Tony. Exactly, exactly, because that, that's what... He's very complete as a striker, but he, he's a big lad as well. And, and the reason I say 16 goal involvements is he's in the top 20% of the top five leagues when it comes to progressive passes. So he's one of those who can kind of hold up the ball and if you've got runners in behind, he's very, very useful at finding them. And he's a real poacher, actually, uh, when he is in the penalty box. You know, for a big guy, he's able to get that yard and, and, and finish as well. And he's playing for Wolfsburg, who are down the bottom. Mm. And when you look at their stats, they're, very much, they're a bit like a Crystal Palace in, in terms of how they play. So so I think he's. I think he'd be a really good uh, player for for the Premier League from mid table side. Mid, I was going to ask you about the level there, about mid table. You're saying because you said ten goals and thirty two appearances in the league this season. Not scored in his last eighteen though. Is that do you put that down to the where he is in the league and the position of, of Wolfsburg more than his individual quality? So the, with the Bundesliga, the, the bottom three, the, oh, it might be the fourth spot. There's a relegation playoff, mm. so there's two points off that. So it's a struggling team, but he's twenty six. Uh, and he has scored goals in the past as well. And I think it's one of those ones where, although his, uh, his contract has a few years to run, mm. I think it's one... I think I like the Danish link as well. When you think of Brentford, yeah. you know, they are littered yeah, with those kind great. of players. And I think a lot of teams in that area of, of the league want that, that big guy up front. You know, even the top teams like Man City, they like that, that focal point. Brentford in particular, yeah, I think he'd be good at Wolves. I think he'd be good at West Ham, which I think is the main link, actually. You've got Antonio, who's not getting any younger. So I, I, think, I think he could come in and, and deal with the physical side of it as well, but also affect the game with fast runners around him, which suits a lot of Premier League teams. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Neve. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think with him... He Stick looks, yours up, Jimbo, by the sorry. way. I'd want to be keeping an eye on him. Maybe I'd give it one more season if I was a Premier League club because that decline in Wolfsburg, mm. I've been, I think there's been a slight decline in him as, as well throughout the season and I'd just be a bit cautious. We see this happen a lot. Premier League clubs will sign players from the Bundesliga, strikers, and they struggle. So I'd keep an eye on I think that's a really fair point. One thing I would say against the goal record yeah. is the fact that, um, that he creates for others. Mm, and yeah. so for, for these teams, if you think of Ivan Toney, yeah, it, probably a bad example in the sense that he scores a lot of goals, but what he does a lot of the time is that he'll bring in Mbwemo and he'll win his headers. I think he's right up there when it comes to winning aerial duels as well. So... He's, he's a great fit, and it's not just about goals with him. Yeah, it's a good point, actually. Eight assists this season, seven of which in the Big Bundesliga, numbers. so good numbers. Yeah, so I've gone with Albert Grombeck, who's also a Dane. So we've got mm. a couple of Danes. Uh, I hadn't heard of I love it, flexing which, which the knowledge. Show. I hadn't Joe heard of and I aren't going to lie here and pretend yeah. we know much about him. There's not a lot we know about this man, no. is there? So the floor's yours. I mean, it's just a pure chance. So I've flown out to Norway a couple of times to watch football and I went to watch Berda Glimt versus Tromsø, uh, their big rivals. Mm. And actually Berda Glimt won the league that season but they lost that game but he stuck out to me. Just the way that he was on the ball, how he passed it, his technique, the way he opened up his body when he collected the ball on the turn. So I just kept a close eye on him throughout the season uh, in the league and he was great. And then they drew Ajax in the Conference League and I thought this is a good test of how good actually is he as the standard increases. And in that first leg, 
he was the best player on the pitch. He scored two. He scored two, yeah. In the second leg, he actually got himself sent off. But three <laughs> players got sent off. Passion. Those no, we're on passion, are we? Chaotic. Uh, the referee, he loved giving yellow cards in those legs. But, um, no, he was brilliant. And he doesn't hold on to the ball too much, but when he does, he makes the absolute most of it. You know, he drives the ball up the pitch. He picks the ball up deep. He turns really quick. He moves his body around. Uh, he's... He looks like a real talent. I don't think he would immediately come to the Premier League. I think maybe a stepping stone like Ajax or mm. perhaps a Galatasaray. I know they were interested in him. Charlotte FC, uh, they were interested in him as well. They offered 9.5 million euros for him, which was a, a big fee, really, mm. uh, for a Norwegian League player. Uh, there's a lot of interest in him. And I think in the next few years, just keep an eye on this name. Okay. That's and a great shout. Good shout. Stick him on. Oh, no. You, on your side. Oh, well, well. Go on your side. Right, let's, look at, let's go into your fourth <laughs> players, then. We'll stick him straight up. He's because... in fourth, Jimbo. Who you got? Uh, I've gone for Alejandro Balde. Oh, this is an interesting mm. shout, because Barca, again, are in a situation yeah. where they need to flog. Yeah, so... Although, so only 20 years of age still. Player yes. That we, a player so, that we're more familiar with. Yeah, so the reason I, w I wanted to... I wanted to talk about Barcelona, mm. but I think when you're thinking about Barcelona and, and we didn't want to go with those, those obvious picks of the players that you yeah. know, it, from what I've read, it suggests that the salary limit that La Liga are giving Barcelona is going from 600 million euros to 200-something. Yeah. Mm. So they have to sell some players. Frankie de Jong might be one of those players. Rafinha might be one of those players. Um, Arojo is in a one uh, mooted as well. But I kind of wanted to, yeah, look to the left a little bit, quite literally, with someone who can play <laughs> left back. His stats are OK. Um, he has all the tools to be a really, really exciting, attacking uh, left back. When I was watching clips of him uh, yesterday, the thing for me is that defensively, he kind of makes the wrong decision sometimes. He's so quick. Yeah. And so sometimes he kind of gets a bit too tight and he doesn't need to do that when he's, he's always going to be fine. And yeah, but that opposition are able to sort of spin him one-on-one. -on -one. I think that can be coached. But in terms of going forward, obviously he's played for Spain, played for Barcelona. He's actually injured, so he's out for the rest yeah. of the season. But in terms of making money off a player, I think you could get a lot of money for him. Mm. And I think there's a lot of teams in the Premier League that, that need a, a left We back. were saying this a couple of weeks back. So we were doing an informed oh. team of the season. I think Doggy was the, the player that we put as, as informed left back of the season. But there weren't many. I think the guests made the point Definitely. that there wasn't many. There's not a plethora of great left backs currently yeah. available that aren't injured or informed in the Premier League. So what sort of... What sort of teams do you think would be well-suited for him? So, if Amarim comes in, I think you could see him at, at Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, as a yeah, wing-back. Yeah. The, the thing that I wonder is, is there a swap for him and Cancelo at Man City? Because Ooh. the thing we have to remember about Pep is that whenever everyone's catching up and, and having inverted fullbacks, mm. he changes it again and he changes it and yeah. he changes it and he changes it. And so, on that left-hand side, if you think of the players that they've got there at the moment, it's Guardiola or Ake, and yeah. I know they're not conventional left-backs, but I think he could very well, next season, want that op op option as um, a left-back who can also kind of be a left-winger. And with Barcelona, the way they play, he's often so high up. So, I would not be surprised if you mm. brought him in. And the great thing as well, you've got Pep who can, can nurture him, of course, but because he's young, I think if he's on the bench for a year or two years... It's not the end of the world for him yeah. or for the club. Because he's only 20 years of age. Neve, who have you gone with? Sticking in La Liga. Yeah, so, yeah, I've stuck with the La Liga. Uh, Alesh Garcia, uh, who, again, I think, similar to sort of you with Jonas Vind, I'm not sure what the level uh, I'm suggesting mm. in the Premier League, and not, maybe not necessarily the highest just yet, uh, but I really like him. He's got a €20 million Euro release clause, and Barcelona... Uh, Ironically interested in him, but they're looking to pay less than that release clause. And <laughs> no way, Barcelona. for the reasons we imagined. But no, he's he's great. Um, again, midfielder. What I like about him is, I think if you're a Premier League club that's got wingers who are creative, who like to stretch uh, the play, mm. he's really good at just shifting it onto the right, shifting it onto the left. He does that very comfortably. And also, if you get chance, go and check out his set pieces. They're really good. They're really fascinating. The technique he uses uh, on dead balls is really interesting, almost like the enigma of James Ward Prowse in this country mm. on set pieces. Uh, him as well. So, yeah, I think he looked I actually good. love watching set piece technique. Of, um, that was my hey, game. That's you, that was you. That was my game. That was you, I definitely will check out the technique of that. Uh, it's a good shout. Yeah, Alex on the let's, board let's there. Go Neve next for the third choice. Yeah, into the top three, Neve. Let's start with you this time. Yeah, so you, you talked about left backs and. I completely agree. Mm. The Premier League needs some more left-backs. And Bradley Locko...
from Ligue 1 could be exactly that because we see it all the time. Defenders from the French League really transfer well over into to England because it's a brutal league, the French League. Yeah. You know, Especially you, this season. I'm oh, sure. yeah. You know, you've got to be aggressive. You've got to be built a tough stuff. Uh, and, and that's my concern with uh, Balde, actually, to, to your point. Which what, I, think, the fact that he I, I worry that. about him physically. physically. He's yeah. quite lightweight, yeah. isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Bradley Locko... I mean, I was watching him play and he seems really comfortable higher up the pitch because he trusts in his ability to track back. He's rapid, he's fast, he's physical. And he looked really good 1v1 as well up against some top players. Uh, and he seems to handle it very well and he's still very young. And he's someone that, if I was a Premier League club, I'd be looking to be the club to get him. I mean, Brest have had such a good season yeah. Yeah. as well, comparatively Second. to what Second we were expecting. League, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That I think, what like level do you said, think he is? Do you think he's... That's a good question. You look at someone like William Saliba who came over to Arsenal very young and brought all of his qualities from the French League straight away into the English League. <clears throat> and you think, well, why can't someone like Bradley Locko do that? I think he's a bit more raw, so maybe not. But actually, if I was a club of that level, I'd be looking to get him in early before other clubs mm. find him. Yeah, OK. okay. Let's get him on the board. The left-back shouts from both of them is yeah. good, actually. We're interested to see what left-back movies oh. there are this summer. Jimbo, who are you going with? So I've gone for Albert Goodmanson. OK. I'm, I really like this guy and I wonder I do what the level thing is so difficult to, to pick with it's these tough, players yeah. mm. he's got he's got proper action man hips he's playing as like a second okay. striker so he's one of the, if you watch him it feels like it, the top half of his body's not moving but then his <laughs> hips are like all yeah. over the place it's like Shakira he uh, <laughs> he's having a fantastic season for Genoa and in terms of shot creating actions he's in the top one percent of the top five leagues wow. yes. now I say that then having a look at Genoa, Genoa have the least amount of shots mm. in Serie A this season. That's crazy. So as a sort of second striker, but also I wonder if he's someone who could play as a right winger and has done a little bit. He could go to he could go to any team really. He's currently he's got about 30 million Genoa seem to want from him. Tottenham are linked with him, but Wolves are linked with him as well. Yeah, Again, I think West Ham might have been chucked in there as well. But even say like a Maybe a Liverpool might be a shout again as oh. Amarim steps up. When Amarim comes in, that guy who kind of plays on the right-hand side actually starts quite narrow. Mm. And Salah's not getting any younger. He could maybe play in that position. He is constantly wanting to be on the ball. And back to the shot-creating actions thing, 23% of any shot that they have comes through here. Wow. That's, yeah, that's so and so, wild, so yeah. put that in perspective, Salah, it's 10%. Yeah, that's incredible. So that, he is... Really, really special. 15 for a goals and 32 points of the season as well. So uh, I, think I think it's a decent yeah. shout. Yeah. Got a bit I of dirt, kinda, dirt like, count vibes about him photo-wise. I kind of like the, <laughs> uh, the wall shout as well, especially yeah. if Pedro Neto does it. Like I know that he's injured again, isn't he, Pedro Neto? But if he does move on, that, I think that right wing slot does become yeah. a little bit more vacant when they have the Cunha, Huang, mm. Hole. Yeah. And he, so he is that second striker, which I, th I think that could come into yeah. back into trend next yeah. season. And he starts, drops deep, and then gets it in turns and makes runs. Oh, I really, really like him. Okay, Takes top kicks two then. Tough. So yeah. we're doing it based on ceiling. So these are your two of your top picks. Rio yeah, Tate, OK. Yeah, I love this shout. I really, really like this shout. I do as well. I mean, what a gorgeous player to watch, isn't he? Mm. Oh, he really is. And there was a really interesting debate that I was watching the other day, and it was about how in the modern game, it's so regimented, it's so tactical, it's about creating as little predictability, as much predictability as possible to reduce that chance in football. Mm. And so how important is it for every team to still have that one player who goes... Do you know what? I'm KDB. Do you know what? I'm this player. I can do something. I can break free of the chains. I can go past a few men and help the team out a little bit uh, and do something that everyone else can't do. And I get that with him at Celtic. You know, mm. he scored an incredible goal against St Mirren recently where he takes it onto his foot. He takes it yeah. in. She, oh, it was brilliant. What a goal. And like you say, when two or three defenders will come and they're tugging at his shirt, He'll easily get through. You know, he's intricate with his footwork. He's crafty. I think if he hadn't had that major, like, serious injury, this yeah, season, is, is then that I think a, it'd be even more talked about? I, I agree with that. Is that is that one thing that might put certain clubs off the, the, the injury record that he has had? I mean, I think he's only had one one appearance for Celtic in five months uh, with hamstring, calf injuries. Yeah, he's, he's been back now. He's, as well, isn't he? he's yeah. had those issues, but he's he's back now. You're absolutely right, but. I think the thing to think about, though, is when he's come back, he's come back with a blast from yeah, his injuries. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. seem to impact his performance, you know, the energy that he brings to Celtic. I personally think he is the best player in the Scottish League. Okay. Uh, and if I was a club in the Premier League, I would be really wanting him to be a star player in my team. OK, stick him on. Jimbo, who are you going with? Uh, so I've gone for, and I always say his name the other way around, so Lenny Yoro. Yeah. And Yenny Loro. Uh, Lenny Yoro, this... 
So, my concern with him coming to the Premier League, mm. he's been linked with Man United, Madrid, Real Madrid, Madrid name a big team, yeah. he's been linked with them. Yeah. He's 18, he plays for Lille. Um, he's last year had about 13 games this year, sort of 27. Uh, a lot of Aston Villa fans will obviously know a yeah. lot about him in the last two games. Um, his stats are fine. His, um, his sort of pass accuracy is really, really good. Um, and actually, he's, he's quite comfortable dribbling out the ball as well. But he is a... He's a bit of a hybrid between Matip and Varane. Yeah. And what I really like about him is he he's not he's, he's very slight at the moment, so he's probably going to fill out. But a bit like Matip in that sense, he's got really sort of long limbs. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. what he's able so to do... So tall, is, isn't he? So tall, but yeah. also reads the game well. So there's a lot of moments where sometimes he's staying really touch tight, but they're so far away from him by the end of it <laughs> that if they try and turn, he's there. Yeah. Or if they're tight and they turn him, he just puts his arm across them and again is able to stop them. And so that sort of defensive now is really impressive, but good on the ball as well for a, a good Lille side who are, are doing all right this year. My one concern with him... 18, going to one of those big, 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 big clubs, is he going to play straight away? I don't know, because he is so young. But I, I would really love to see him yeah. at, like, a Bournemouth, but you're never going to... He's going to cost too much. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. I mean, but for his like, development, that would be good. Very close to joining Madrid as well, isn't he? According to, like, a fair few reports. Like. Yeah, maybe and I think that's... the fees that I've read are it's sort that... of in that 18... Yeah, yeah it's huge. Part. It's an 18-year-old French like... centre-back. It's not going to be cheap. Yeah. It? I think but... if he goes to that club and then gets a loan to a, another side, yeah. Yeah. say, if that happens in the Premier League, I would love to see him... Yeah, One thing I will say is Madrid are starting to scare me with their... I opinion. know. You know, if you Lenny Yoro comes to the door, you're looking at Mbappe, potentially Alfonso Davis as well. Yeah, Hendrick. Joining an already <laughs> extremely young and talented team. Yeah, Nacho yeah. said he's leaving, I think, yeah. as well. So. Their aim is just to sign the next generation. Yeah, it's of so talent. scary. Yeah. And he is such a good player. Right, last players then. It's for really you gone He's with. favourite. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Lobotka. I just don't think he's talked about enough. He is... I don't know where to start with him. Um, he's just brilliant. And, of course, the year that Napoli won the Scudetto last season, mm. uh, he was a huge part of that. And, you know, his press resistance, picking the ball up deep, being that player that if you were another player on the pitch for Napoli and you were a bit like, oh, I don't know where to go, I don't, don't know where to pass the ball, he'd just be there. He'd mm. be there in some space for you to pass it to him. And he would decide, OK, how slow do I want this game to be? How quick do I want yeah. this game to be? Uh, but this season, Napoli have really struggled. And actually, it's this season where it's been so chaotic around him. The defence has changed. They've lost Kim Min Jae in midfield as well. They've really struggled to help out the defence. It's been a little bit erratic for Napoli. He's been the constant. He's still press resistance. No one can get the ball off him. And he makes football look easy when he drives up the pitch. Yeah. Okay, stick him on. Tough though, isn't it? Because obviously Zielinski's going on free, so he's mm. going to win. So like, I think Napoli are going to like scrap. Also, fight 29 years Zielinski of age. It's interesting to see whether he would make that move late on his career, but in, we'll, yeah. time, I, I, time I, will I, tell. And Joe, when his stock's low, a bit like Jonas uh, Vind, when their stock's low, that's a good time to go yeah. and buy yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, get yeah. a bit cheaper. Jimbo, last one. João Neves. Yeah. Mm, so yeah. if if Iniesta and Scott Parker had a baby. This is what right. Scott Parker. <laughs> Scott Parker. Yeah, never. So, yeah, tucks his shirt in. Yeah, he's he does. Yeah, he does yeah, which, you, know, you can like or dislike. He's only 19, uh, plays for Benfica. And Matic, actually, he's been linked with Man United. And, and Matic has said, who uh, played for Benfica, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He said, don't do it. Um, because he wants him to develop at Benfica. But he... I, I like the Scott Parker element of it, because he, he does have that defensive mindset. Yeah. But he's brilliant on the ball. Um, his shot-creating actions for a player that plays quite deep in, in the Benfica side is three-point-something, uh, which is really, really strong. Super press-proof, able to drive with the ball at times as well. So he's got that that ability to dribble, which sometimes those players who just recycle and recycle, they don't have that element. Yeah. Say, like, an Enzo... Enzo maybe doesn't isn't able to drive with the ball at times. He can find those those spaces and get himself out of uh, trouble sometimes. Uh, he is a superstar. Okay. I really think he is. And it's a good gonna, note. Again, last two picks from Jimbo. There, we're talking big money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Million. big money. Yeah, yeah. 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 Contact um, to twenty twenty eight. I like it though. There is confirmation of Verratti five well. players destined for the Premier League, according to Neve and Jimbo. Let us know what you think of those picks at home.